what up guys for anyone who doesn't know me i'm melissa welcome to my channel so this past month i have been house sitting in colorado i signed up for a website and through that website i've basically been getting a shit ton of house sits all over the state and i've just been exploring each area as much as i possibly can so last week i was in colorado springs and while I was out there, I really wanted to make the most of that because I knew I probably wouldn't make it back out there by the end of the summer. So yeah, in six days, I did a shit ton of exploring. I saw so many things that were just amazing. There's so much to do out there. But I wanted to make this video and share the top five things that I really think are worth seeing if you are out there. Because I know now personally how hard it is when like you're on a time crunch and you want to see everything you can, but you don't know how to prioritize, you know, what's worth going to see and what's you know, not as important to go see. So yeah, if you are interested in hearing that list, just keep watching. So the first place I wanna talk about is a place called Steps to Seven Falls. And I would say this is probably my favorite place on this list. I just thoroughly enjoyed my day here. So this is a park. You actually do have to pay an entrance fee of $14. But once you get in there, you get to see a series of seven different waterfalls. And they all lead up to one huge ass waterfall that you can actually go to the top to by climbing these stairs. Now, these stairs are incredibly intense. There are 224 of them. They are very, very steep. But the view from the top is so worth it. It is just absolutely gorgeous. Now, Colorado has a bunch of waterfalls. I mean, there are so many different waterfalls that you can hike to, but what's really cool about this one in particular is that it's very family friendly. First of all, it's all paved. The whole walk to the waterfall is completely paved, which makes it very easy for anyone to do it. And then once you get up there, like I said, there are a bunch of stairs that you have to climb, but they also have an elevator that you can take. You know, you don't have to be super fit and active in order to go enjoy this beautiful waterfall. So that I thought was really cool because I've been on a lot of different hikes that you really do have to work your ass off just to get to a waterfall. So this one, easy for anyone to go see. Since it is so touristy, they also have things like, you know, a gift shop, a restaurant, to concession stands, you know, little things like that where you can really enjoy it and make it a whole day for the whole family. Another thing I really liked about this place was once you got to the top of the waterfall, you have an option of going on two different hikes if you so choose. So one hike is 40 minutes there and back and it took you, it takes you to a lookout area high up in the mountains. You get to see the mountains, you see the skyline of the city, absolutely beautiful. And then the other hike, of course I went on both. The other one is only 20 minutes there and back and it takes you to another little waterfall. I love that because you know, I saw that you can come here just to like do a little easy walk and see a beautiful waterfall. Or if you want to take it a step further, you can also make a whole day out of this and also get a nice little hike in. So I personally say it's definitely worth the $14. Like who doesn't love a good waterfall? So the second place I want to talk about is called the garden of gods. Now, if you ever Googled Colorado, I'm sure you have seen a picture of this, this park because it is pretty famous. It is definitely, again, a touristy area, but 110% worth going to. It is absolutely gorgeous. Basically, it's a park of rocks just sprouting up from the ground. They're huge, ginormous, like orange rocks. I'm doing such a bad job of like explaining the beauty of this, but absolutely gorgeous. Now, the number one thing I loved about this place is that it was freaking free completely free you don't have to pay to park you don't have to pay an entrance you don't have to pay nothing you can just go up there park and walk around free of charge which is awesome because not many places are free around here i'm telling you like there's not a lot of hikes that you can go on completely for free so this one definitely you got to check it out now also since it's touristy like i said it's an, another one of those just easy walks the whole entire walk through the park is paved so again, it's easy for children to do, it's easy for the elderly to do. You can just really just go there in regular, just street clothes and take a nice stroll through this park and get some amazing views. It is one of TripAdvisor's like most top rated things in Colorado. So obviously you just gotta do it. Next, I wanna talk about a place called The Incline. <laughs> now this place is definitely not for everyone. I'm just warning right there, this is not for everyone. So basically the incline is this set of stairs that goes directly straight up this mountain. And when I mean like straight up, I literally mean like straight up. You truly are at an incline. 
Now there are over 2,000 stairs, I wanna say. Like it's a ridiculous amount of stairs that you have to go up to to get to the top. And once you get to the top, the views are absolutely gorgeous. It is so beautiful. But I would say the purpose of going here, it really is for the act of going up these stairs and just to be able to say that you freaking did it. I'm not gonna lie, it's probably one of the hardest things I have ever done. Like this will kick your ass. I did not see one person up there that wasn't like panting and dying going up these stairs. But once you get to the top, it's completely worth it. It's just one of those things that you can just say that you did. Like when I got to the top, man, I felt so accomplished. I was like, oh hell yeah, I just did that. Like come at me, did you see that, you know? It's just one of those things that's just like a fun challenge to yourself. But uh, yeah, once you get to the top, you can walk down if you would like, but for me, I decided not to do that. I, it just made me queasy looking down because you're so high up. I didn't want to fall on the way down. So they do have an option that you can hike down, which was beautiful, but it also took like double the time to get down the mountain as it did for me to get up. So um, yeah, if you're into that, if you'd like to do that, that is an option. But if you want to just like get the shit over with, I would recommend walking down the stairs. And also great thing about this place, it is, it is free. Except for, I personally had to pay for parking, but I'm pretty sure I saw that there was a free shuttle you could take if you parked a little further. I was dumb and just like parked at the top and had to pay. So yeah, still though, when you get to go, like when the entrance fee somewhere is free, like hop on that. So I'm pretty sure almost everyone has heard of this next one. It's very famous. It is known as America's Mountain, but it's called Pike's Peak. <laughs> so it's called America's Mountain because that song America the Beautiful is actually written about it. Apparently the writer I think was like at the top and from the view of the top she was inspired to write America the Beautiful. Now you can hike up this mountain. I've heard though it is very intense. Like I've heard it's an incredibly intense hike. Um, I don't know how true that is. I decided to drive because that's what most people do. Now um, it does cost some money to get in there. I want to say it costs like $23 per person. I'm pretty sure, I don't remember because it was just me, but I'm pretty sure at this park, they don't do it by car. They actually charge you per person, even if you guys are all driving in the same car. So it is a little pricey, I think just because it is so famous, but definitely a cool drive. So yeah, you just drive up the mountain and then once you get to like the three mile mark, like three miles from the top, you have to park your car, get out, and then a shuttle will take you up to the very top. And the reason why they do the shuttles is because, y'all, once you get up there, it is, the roads are so freaking curvy and you're literally like on the side of the effing mountain. Like, I didn't like that part at all. I'm not gonna lie. I didn't like it. I wasn't about it. I don't like height. I mean, I don't like heights like that. Mm -mm. But it is cool to see once you finally get to the top. But I will say, if you don't like heights like that either, maybe this isn't for you. Because literally, you're driving on the side of the mountain, you're at the very edge of it, and then in your life, is in the hands of some random shuttle driver. So, I wasn't too fond of that part. However, once you get to the top, very beautiful. I mean, you can see for miles and miles and miles. It's great to take pictures. They have a little gift shop slash restaurant up there and they also have these famous donuts that you can get there i don't know why they're famous i guess because they're made on the top of a mountain or whatever but they're bomb i got two and they were great so yeah this is a cool day thing i guess i wouldn't say that this would be at my very very top of the list of things to do but it's a definitely a cool thing to say you did and the reason I say it's not the very top is because it really is kind of just like you drive up there, get to the top, take some pictures, and then you drive down. And that's kind of like it. I mean, it's beautiful along the way. You do get to take a lot of pictures, see some nice scenery. But I personally like hiking. I might have had a better time if I would have hiked it. I don't know though. Hikes Peak, it's cool. It's just cool to say that you did this one. I would definitely do it just for the hell of saying that you did it. So the fifth place I want to talk about is called Cave of the Winds. Now, I'm not gonna lie, this place is like the definition of a tourist trap. I mean, they have so many things that you can do there, which makes it really fun, but I'm not gonna lie, it does cost some money to be here. But basically, you pay to go through a guided tour through this cave. 
that's like inside of the mountain which is so cool especially if you've never done something like that before it is very very interesting I personally love things like this because I like to be able to have like a tour guide someone that I can ask questions um, to you know get information you just it's a learning experience you get to walk through and learn all about the history of the cave the history of how it was founded yada 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 you know all that good stuff so for me I personally love things like that that I just get to learn and then I actually have someone that I can ask questions to and also it's beautiful you know if you've never seen the inside of a cave very beautiful now again what's cool about this is after you're done with the tour they have so many other things that you can do outside I mean they have places for the kids to play they have like obstacle courses they have a mini rock climbing wall they have this like ride it looked like almost like a, a zip line except for you're sitting in a seat you know I don't know it looked really cool I personally didn't do it but it looked cool um, they have a restaurant you can get food they definitely have alcohol there I saw a whole little bar over there a gift shop you know complete touristy shit but something that you can make a whole entire day out of now pro tip on this one the tickets are about $21 I believe to go through the tour but if you go online they have a thing called happy hour or a thing called early risers now for happy hour the tickets go down to $18 per adult which that's what I did it was awesome it's just like later on in the day you go at like I think six o'clock on you can get cheaper tickets or they have an early riser early riser sale where I think it's about $16, $17 something like that and I don't know you have to go early in the morning and it's also cheaper as well so that's what I did I'm cheap as hell so any way to save a buck get in there so yeah definitely worth checking out it's very cool if you're into that type of stuff it's not somewhere that you'll get to go to and just like freely explore a cave by yourself it's definitely one of those like you pay you have a tour guide and then you go through as a group so if you're into that type of shit check it out <laughs> so I actually don't have any footage of all of this last place but I definitely thought it was worth mentioning and that is the Chieni, 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 I don't know, the zoo in Colorado Springs, can't miss it, um, but I've been to a lot of zoos before, especially the one in Atlanta, I've been there a bunch of times, and it does not compare to the zoo here in Colorado Springs, I thoroughly enjoyed my day here, it was just pretty it was clean they had very interesting animals I mean a lot of animals that I had never seen before and it's one of those zoos where like you can feed the giraffes they come right up to you, you they eat right out of your hand it's very you know they have restaurants you can walk around with your beer which I don't think you can do that in Georgia you know it's just different it was definitely something worth going to if you have the extra time it was about 24 bucks I want to say to get in and yeah, like I said, worth it. Definitely worth it if you have the time. So yeah, that is my list of top five, actually six things that you should go see if you are in Colorado Springs. Or even if you're just in Colorado and you are interested in coming out to the Springs, this is my list of things pretty much in order of like most important to see to kind of least important things to see. So at least you have an idea of like what's out here. Um, there are a lot of other things that I would have loved to do, but I would say that going to see these things, I was completely fulfilled. I was satisfied. I thought that I saw a very good majority of what was out here in the Colorado Springs. So I hope this list helped you. I know that things like this actually help me. I, when I'm going on a trip, I always look up videos of like things to do, what I should do. I like people's personal opinions, not just like a typed list of things. So yeah, I hope this helped you. If it did, please give it a thumbs up and stay tuned for more videos.